Hi everyone, welcome to my YouTube art channel. This would be the very first um, video that um, I record a lot of, you know, a long time of my painting process and me talk talking through the whole <laughs> video. So I am so excited for this project. For those of you that are watching this, that have been following me for quite a while, either on my Facebook, Tumblr, Inst or Instagram, Instagram, <laughs> sorry, I am now having a really big personal project and um, I could as well say that this is the biggest personal project that I have ever planned up until now in my life. So I am writing a book and making a comic out of it. Everything is original, uh, original story, original concept and everything. So it's gonna take, I don't know how long because I have to plan everything. I have to create everything from scratch. And yeah, I decided to um, make this video because I would also love to, you know, share with you what this project is about, what the story is about without spoiling too much, <laughs> of course. I am so excited for this. Like, I never ever would have thought that I would actually write a book. I mean, I'm still in the stage of do plan to publish this book in the near future. So yeah, this painting is um, these two characters are the main characters in my story, especially the girl there. She's the, the main protagonist character. So I will share a little bit more about, uh, about them, about the story and so on later. Now I would like to share a little bit, you know, some tips and explanation on what I do on the painting. So as you um, have been watching, um, I was kind of struggling with their anatomy. I, I could say that I pretty much understand the basic anatomy, but when it comes to making them move, like to, to make my characters have a dynamic pose, that is still difficult. I mean, yeah, like I said, I, I understand the basic anatomy, but somehow when it comes to dynamic poses or movement, it, it's a bit hard for me trying to make them look like it's natural. And it's also hard to draw anatomy the way they're supposed to like twist and turn, you know, like the muscles and all of that. But yeah, anatomy is hard. <laughs> it's difficult. So I still need to practice a lot, but I'm pretty happy with this sketch, though I am still confused about the environment. Because, yeah, because I, I was confused about the environment because I wanted them to, to, I just want the whole painting to have that romantic feeling, that really gentle romantic feeling, but I also want a little bit, you know, dark shadows. So, as you may notice earlier, I was, you know, pretty confused on what I want to do with the environment. Either I, I want them to be in a forest or in a luxurious greenhouse, but as you can already see now, I began painting. Well, it's not really painting, but yeah, I decided that I want them to be dancing in like an outdoor garden where there's some like flowers and plants and bushes around. And I want them to be under some trees. So you can see that I pretty much, you know, pretty much pour them in all these shadows of the trees and I put some like spots of light as if the sunlight comes through the trees and yeah <laughs> I really love that effect I've always wanted to paint um, something with uh, a really interesting contrasting you know lighting shadows um, uh, you know setting in a painting I've always wanted to try that, I've always wanted to, but I never did because I always, 
I used to feel like I lacked the skills to do that, but now I decided that I want to push it further. I I feel like I just really need to practice, and so I decided to to do it. And I am very satisfied that uh, with, I mean with the result, and I'm pretty happy that <laughs> that I push myself to to do this and to try it because you would never know if you. You never try, you know. So yeah, I'm pretty happy with this, uh, with the um, result, and yeah, it's really fun working with um, lighting and shadows, especially contrasting, you know, um, lighting, shadow setting. Yeah, <laughs> I just love, love. I just really love contrasting. Um, lights but i just need to practice more so i can make more interesting concept with that so as you can see in this part i haven't really zoomed in yet i pretty much just try to block colors and blend some colors here and there plan out the the way the shadow supposed to work and also the lights i haven't draw and I mean sorry paint any details because I learned that when it comes about painting a complex composition especially with many details you have to make sure that the whole painting looks balanced back then when I when I did not realize this yet I used to immediately zoom in so closely and just focus on the details like I could literally spend probably like 80 or even 90 percent of the whole painting process just zooming in like crazy and focusing too much on the details but when I zoom it out I feel like I lost that sense of balance and it's just messed up like and like this one area could look so detailed so realistic and then the area right beside it looks you know messy and blurry and then the whole painting is just it's just craps a uh, craps <laughs> did i just say craps oh, i'm so awkward yeah <laughs> what i meant to say it looks crappy so the sense of balance in the whole composition of a painting is very important and I'm glad that I realized that uh, pretty quickly that when you paint something, um, especially if the whole painting has a complex composition and details, you have to just really be patient to not add too much details too quickly because again, you need to make sure that you plan everything out at the very least 90 percent sure you know that this how this is uh you know how it's supposed to look like and when you are you know 90 percent sure you can go on painting and adding details because it's very important to keep the balance and i also learned that um that details is not everything you know I, I used to believe that what makes a painting really great is the details like the more hyper realistic it is the more amazing it is like oh my god this is just amazing this is the best thing ever yes it does show off your skills a lot and how crazy a talented you are I always try to push myself to draw really realistically to paint um, all the details and all of that and i mean that's that's totally okay if that is your style if that's what you like if that's what you want to go for but um honestly i i learned that i mean detail is important but it's not everything it's not the only reason that makes the painting looks good you know it's again it's always about the sense of balance because if every single area in the whole painting is very detailed then you cannot even focus where you want to look like there's no focus point you know you have to make the painting looks balanced and 
and also I I realize actually the most important thing when it comes to um, like painting I mean again this this really depends on your style actually but most of the time in the art industry world what's really important is the concept the stronger the concept the better it is that's that's what I learned and that's what I have been you know paying attention to many the professional artists and art companies art studios and so on they actually care more about the story that you want to share the emotions that you want to express the concept of the painting that's what they really after I mean yeah but but then again I guess that really depends on what you want to go for because yeah then again it really depends because some people just want to paint portraits uh, for um, like commissions or if that's just what they want to do and that's completely fine and I love portraits I love portraits a lot I just love painting face faces so much it's just so much fun and again, I'm also one of those person, uh, sorry, people, they're just so crazy about details. But over the past times, I realized that I personally feel like concept is, is, um, is actually more important than just adding details. You need to put the emotions. And that's why I have seen so many great portrait artists like what makes them so unique even though they paint for example they just paint faces but they have that really unique style to it they have that unique understanding of color composition they have their own way of expressing uh, emotions or even like the expression of that portrait that could really make them different and special or, or unique in their own you know way of portraying people and so then again it doesn't matter how simple or well how detailed your painting is again I learned that apparently um, concept is very important so as you can see even up till this point I still haven't like zoom in too much uh, again because I need to you know make sure that everything looks fine when I zoom it out everything looks pretty much balanced and and then when I'm pretty sure with how things supposed to look like that's when I began to detail out things but yeah at first it was pretty hard trying to you know stop myself from detailing too much when I first realized that you know you have to make sure that everything is balanced and all of that but as time goes by I yeah I learned to be able to manage that also at this point I'm trying to practice to use the square brush I I've always want to to achieve that um, that kind of style or you know feeling of a style of um, a digital painting but it looks painterly <laughs> you know what I'm saying like I really like that kind of style where a digital painting looks quite traditional and I realize I I follow a lot of amazing artists I I notice their work I pay attention to to their brush strokes and the way they choose the colors and all of that how they blend colors and things like that I learn from so many amazing artists and when it comes to painting digitally to make it look like it's traditional or at least it has that painterly kind of feeling you just have to to use a texture brush it doesn't matter what's the shape of the brush but I just recently found out that the best brush for it is a square brush so yes the brush uh, the shape of the brush on Photoshop or any other painting program the, sh the shape of it is square brush and that is hard as heck it's difficult but um, but I don't know I, I found out that at like the second or third try of practicing 
I managed to do that. Um, I managed to get that kind of、um, feeling of how it's supposed to look like painting using a square brush. So yeah, it's it's difficult, but it's worth a shot. But then again, we all have our own, you know, personal style. It really depends on what you want to go after. Some people like their painting to be texture and very realistic, or even hyper realistic. Some people like it to be really smooth and digitally. But yeah, it all depends on your style. Oh, and I also forgot to mention. You may notice、uh, some a few times. I turned the whole painting to black and white. That is also a really, really great way to see the value of your painting. Because when you are painting with、uh, colors, obviously, you cannot really, you know, notice which one is darker than the other one. I used to think that blue is. Brighter than red, but I am <laughs> pretty much shocked to see blue and red、uh, in the black and white、uh, setting. Apparently, blue is darker than red. So when you turn the whole painting into black and white, you can get the you can read like the whole composition and information of ah.、Uh, Like what I just did right there, I can see it a lot better. Which one is、uh, brighter, lighter? Which one is darker? And that way makes it a lot easier for me to plan out what kind of colors I need to put in, and the lighting balance, and yeah, basically all of that. I always, you know, feel like I can not paint gold properly. Like it's so hard to paint gold. I don't really know how. I I try many times, but I feel like it just doesn't look like gold. You know, it's like it's not reflecting. It's just I don't know. It looks really weird. It looks really wrong. The colors is just off. But then I found out that the easiest way, and it's actually a really great way for me personally to to paint gold, like um. Uh, like the especially the embroidery of her dress on the front,、uh, as you can see there, it's all grey and black, and and so I turn on the black and white settings of this painting, and then I paint in the gold in black and white, so I can clearly see the value of it. Because again, gold is supposed to be really reflective, and it's yeah, it's really hard to paint it、uh, immediately with color. So what? Just what I am doing right now, I am trying to paint on her embroidery, her gold embroidery in black and white. And、um, yeah, I'm just painting in that. And after after I'm finished, I add a new layer. And I think okay, so I add a new layer on top of the of the black and white paintings, and then I set that layer to color、uh, color setting, and then I just put in on the gold. Yeah, just like what I did there, I just painted、um, gold, like not really gold, but kind of like a bit dark orange brown. Brown, orange-ish color, and I just plod it around on the on top of the black and white painting, and it really works like a charm. And I realized that oh my god, that just really saves a lot of time. So I'm so happy that I found that technique. I and yeah, I, I, I whenever I want to learn new things, I just look up all the you know. Amazing artists that I follow, and I try my best to learn from them because, yeah, <laughs> it's really, it's really a good way to to practice to become better, and yeah, what not. So either way, now back to my personal project. So yeah, I really do plan to publish this book and creating a comic out of it, and I also do plan to I don't know when, but soon enough. When I am ready to to create the actual comic, I plan to open up a Patreon. But oh my god! 
Oh my God. What I meant to say is Patreon. Pa- pa- Patreon? Pa- Patreon? Is that how you say it? Yeah. The website where you can pledge to your favorite artist to support them for focusing on the work and to sh- for them to share it with you. So I plan to make Patreon soon enough when I am ready to create the actual comic so that I could truly focus on you know spending my time to write my book create the comic and share it with you while you know I'm able to be supported and to really focus on this because yeah I'm really excited so again yeah these two characters they are like the main characters and but the main protagonist character is obviously the girl I think I might as well say that her name is um Wait, I think I don't want to spoil it yet. <laughs> Actually, you can just go to my art blogs and also, oh, especially Tapastic, you will know who she is and who the guy is, uh, their names. But I haven't spoiled anything about their background story, about what's going on and everything. So now, while I'm doing the, um, uh, the illustration for my story, and pretty much creating so many things from scratch because I have to, you know, to dis- to create all this, you know, world concept, their culture, their um, environment, their world settings, even their flora and fauna and everything. I have to, yeah, pretty much everything about the concept, I have to create it all by scratch because I pretty much create a whole new world just like Aladdin said <laughs> so while I'm doing that um, also writing the book and also creating the illustration from time to time I like to post like com- a small comic teasers so from time to time I like to make short comic strips where I like to show a bit of teasers about the comic about the characters so you can you know know a bit more about what's going on because I would really love to to introduce more of my characters and my story and I think that is one of the great way to introduce to to people what you are working on so that they could know what you are you know working on so yeah you can follow the art blocks that I put in the description and especially Tapastic. So if you don't know what Tapastic is, I think that is one of the most popular uh, website now for indie artists to post their comic for free. So indie artists just like myself and f- from so many art blocks like DeviantArt, Tumblr and many other art blocks Uh, for artists that are starting out their own personal comics they post it there so it's a webtoon but Tapastic is growing larger now it's the community there is really great I've been there for just a few months actually and I feel really really um, you know great there with all the community and all the amazing artists that I follow there and yes everything is just really it seems really nice there in, in that website so I'm really glad <laughs> that website exists so please do follow me there and also my art blogs where I post teasers of my comic but of course obviously I would not spoil too much because why would I spoil it <laughs> ah, I really cannot wait to um, publish this book one day in the future but for sure I will obviously create the comic first and then I will publish the book I don't really think I would want to publish this comic with a company or a publisher because if I do so then I do not think I can like post it on on like a website or even my own website for free I cannot really share it with you with all my followers and all the community and especially making um, an income or support um, out of it uh, through Patreon, pa- Patreon I don't think that's available I don't think that's um, 
I'm able to do that if I have a contract with a company or a publisher. I mean, I don't know. I have no idea about that, but I think it might be that way. So I don't know if I want to publish my comic officially in mass. I might as well publish it by myself, just like few books, you know, and sell it at conventions comic workshops and whatnot. I don't know. I have no idea. I still have a long, long way to go, but but for sure, 100%, I do want to publish this book, and I just can't wait to do that. <laughs> so pretty much this story, the genre of this story is a dark romance, a fantasy romance, but it has a lot of twists. It's not just about that. In fact, I also add some things in this you know some things that is going on in this reality in this real world and i like to add that in um in this comic because actually one of the the purposes of me writing this book is not just about me wanting to share my story and to express myself but it's also about helping people i want this book to be able to to really help people you know kind of like a self-help book at the same time if they have a really depressing situation oh i'm really sorry about my dog there but yeah like when people have a really depressing moment in their life or a situation that they really want to move on to let go and move on and to like heal themselves whatever situation that is either about relationship friendship self-expression on so on i i add that also in the book so it's not just about my story i mean it is about my story but there are some parts of the story that i would really like to be able to be you know helpful for others because I, I've gone through a lot of things in my life and I think it's a great way to express them uh, through my book, through my story as well and the comic. So yeah, um, there's a lot of twists, there's a lot of you know complex concept within this book. It's not just about that you know dark fantasy romance. It's a little, about a lot of things, a lot of things. It's about the world, it's about people. Oh, it's about everything <laughs> so yeah i really can't wait for that and um yeah <laughs> so please do follow me on my art blogs and subscribe like and comment this video and i am so uh glad that i mean if you're still watching <laughs> thank you so much for watching and i wish you a great day see you soon